Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And uh, today is uh, Friday, January 11, 2019. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results. And uh, if you've been on the site, you've probably checked out the Catawiki listings and so forth. This week was a good week. Um, a lot of stuff came back on, on uh, as soon as the holidays were over. It's, it's pretty typical. It gets quiet around Christmas, and then sellers get back to work, pay pay for their vacations I guess and um, here we are all right and uh, nice results and we're going to start with this this was that uh, very nice this was in the newsletter this was a very nice compressed form yixing teapot with blue enamels I thought this was rather pretty nice form interesting form very sleek uh, sort of a compressed version of the 18th century examples and uh, it did pretty well it brought uh, had a few minor issues and it still brought five hundred and ninety five dollars which was gratifying to see because Yixing was really popular the prices were crazy on this stuff about six years ago five years ago and uh, then it sort of t simmered off because I, I think maybe the, there was too much of it came onto the market when it suddenly went up in price and now the prices seem to be reviving a bit for Yixing so we'll see we'll see as we go into the year uh, the, the the trade issue with China seems to be getting resolved and as I, I suspected it would it's taken a little longer than I thought but um, I think as soon as that's taken care of you're gonna see Chinese buyers coming back in and spending money all right um, any rate, get on to this. This was that uh, very, very pretty Qinlong period, uh, g heavily gilded uh, Famille Rose uh, teapot with the children um, playing with the sticks and banners and the, and the women and so forth. And I like this a lot because it, I, I like the fact that they gave it a nice big scene. Uh, so you, you had a lot of decoration, a nice big decorated area to look at. And um, it did pretty well. It, it, it brought, a, brought right about what I was hoping it would bring, about $1,043. Nice piece. This came from a seller here in Massachusetts, out just uh, west of here a little bit. Nice example. He gets good things. And uh, then there was this, the pair of cash bows. Uh, these were nice. I thought these were quite lovely. They were made in the first half of the 19th century. Uh, they had these nice rope twist handles and this, these raised, uh, raised fruits, fruit and vine decoration all over it. And, uh, of course, the detachable tops for the, uh, for the bulbs. And uh, it was nice to see a complete pair. Often you see these and you examine them and there's a handle missing or they've been damaged somehow. All right, but these are in pretty good shape. Here's a picture of the tops. All right, and here's the decoration. Good quality decoration. It's very typical 19th century decoration. It's the same sort of decoration you actually see on, on, on you know, Rose Mandarin and that sort of thing. They're kissing cousins. And uh, the pair brought $1,530. I think that's largely due to the fact that complete pairs don't turn up very often that are in decent condition. All right. And then on to this was this very nice uh, Wukai uh, Kung Shi or transitional period uh, little sleeve vase. This wasn't a terribly big one, but it was strongly decorated. The decoration on this was nice and strong. Had the typical fritting around the top and so forth. And uh, here's the bottom of it. It had been drilled out um, for some reason. I think it had been made into a little like a boudoir lamp, but it was slightly concave. Um, and uh, fortunately, they didn't chip the hole out, but there it is. Very typical transitional uh, foot rim on this. Slightly V-shaped, trimmed with a knife, and then uh, unglazed, of course. And it brought $711 as is. How big was this? I don't remember. Seven inches. Yeah, it wasn't a big one, um, but, but very nice, and uh, it did just fine. Had it not been drilled, it probably would have doubled that. All right, and then on to this. This was that robin's egg blue two-handle vase with the impressed chin lung mark on the bottom. Um, here's, the, here's the base of it. Nice-looking pot, okay? It's an old one. I'm not sure it's chin lung, but it certainly is an old one. Um, maybe early 19th century or so from what I can see. But a good-looking piece. And it brought $4,049, all right? Maybe some people thought it was period. Um, uh, but at any rate, it was a nice piece, a good color, and these robin's egg pieces always do well. Uh, monochrome collectors are, 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 are legion. All right, and then on to this, this uh, very nice little sort of late Ming dish, simply decorated with a bird on a branch with a, with a pear or some sort of fruit, and that's it. Had a small chip up there, but a rather charming little dish. Here's a picture of the underside right there, typical sort of late Ming piece. And uh, it only brought $61, okay? I pointed this out last week because I thought, I thought, well, 
you know, somebody might might see it and they, they, they don't have a lot of money to spend. This would be a good thing to buy. Um, this was a nice, genuine little piece, almost almost like Chan Chi wear, um, but uh, very nice. I thought this was great. It was only a few inches in diameter, maybe four or five inches, but a good thing. All right. And then on to this. There were a couple of decent jades on here this this last week. There was, and they all came from the same seller. Um, and one of them was this, this, uh, this figure uh, carrying, a, uh, carrying a staff, uh, jade, 19th century. Nice little piece of mutton fat. And uh, it did all right. It brought $651. All right. But, and then the same seller also had this. And that was, this was that uh, sort of cool little uh, 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 Japanese netsuke with the enamel decoration on it that I like so much. thought it was just pretty and interesting. All right. Here's a picture of the back of it. You may recall we talked about it last week, all right? And in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $641. So it's an interesting thing, very interesting thing. This is seller gets interesting objects. And the all, same seller also had this, was that sort of late Ming duck. Um, also done very much like some of the Sung ducks were done, uh, but um, nice color, uh, nice russet in the, in the jade. Uh, just a, a good little figure, nice little figure. These are the kinds of things you can buy if you, you know, if you don't have you know fifty or a hundred thousand dollars to throw around on jade carvings. This was a sweet little piece, and uh, it brought uh, fifteen hundred and seven dollars, which is not unreasonable at all. I thought that was a perfectly fair price for it. All right, and then on to this. This was a, a pair of Femi Ver vases with the uh, with blue enamels, and one of the things about blue enamels you can see here it chips. It's very brittle tends to chip off, all right? And uh, the pair brought $3,194, all right? But nicely decorated, good-looking pair of vases. And on to this, the root carving. Uh, I like root carvings. I like carvings. I like Chinese wood carvings in general. And uh, this was a, a, a nice one. And it was fairly tall, about 24 inches or 28 inches tall. Uh, good detail all the way around. Nice, nice surface on it. Love the expression and, and all the wrinkles in his brow and all that sort of stuff. Just uh, terrific. And uh, here's a picture of his, of his uh, sandals he made out of braided, uh, braided rope. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,213, which was right about in the range I think we talked about. Uh, I, I think I said nine to 1300 or something like that. Anyway, nice looking, nice looking carving. Good carving. All right. I think they're undervalued. And then on to uh, uh, Josh Chamberlain, Juice, 1499 is the seller name. Um, he had a, a fairly large sale in on Monday, and everything did fine. Everything did well. Did very well. All right, one of them was this, this nice little Jai Jing uh, Ming period dragon bowl. Um, good looking example and uh, in nice condition. Very, very, uh, you know, well known form. Here's a picture of the interior, okay? And uh, here's the bottom, okay? And this came out of a collection. I talked to him about this. And uh, it brought $18,600. Which is actually right, right about right for this. That this is uh, probably about what it would have brought at Christie's had he sent it there. So he saved himself about five thousand, four thousand dollars in, in you know absorbing the buyer's premium and commissions. All right. More and more sellers, by the way. I want to mention something. Uh, more and more, I think you're going to find sellers uh, putting putting things. You know, if they have the choice of going to auction or putting it on eBay, they're likely to take a shot at eBay, I think, increasingly, because the uh, seller commissions in New York, when you, when you sell something down there, people often forget the seller ultimately pays the buyer's premium because the buyer goes in with a fixed price in mind and then limits you know, how high they're going to go based on how much the buyer's premium adds on to something. So if a buyer wants to spend you know, $50,000 on something, they're going to stop on the bidding at around thirty-five to 38000 because they're going to have the buyer's premium thrown on. And in the end, if it sells for thirty-five or 38000 after they pay the, the house commission, they're going to be down around thirty-two, thirty-three thousand. 33000 All right. And so on these more uh, things that are under the six figures uh, that are more recognizable, it actually makes more sense to, to put the things here than it does to put them um, in New York and wait you know, four to eight months to sell it and then another 45 days to get paid. Just sell it and get your money and pay eBay a couple of hundred bucks for the privilege. Yeah.
So anyway, let's move along um, to this. He had a pair of nice looking pair. These were a good looking pair of transitional chars. They too had been drilled um, like the like the previous transitional piece. Tra drilling transitional chars was a very big business back in the in the 20s and 30s. They drilled a lot of Chinese vases because there was a shortage of lamps, uh, good looking lamps for the decorator market, and uh, these weren't particularly valuable back in the day. So. Uh, uh, lamp shops used to buy these up and drill them out. Yamanaka and company drilled a lot of these. Anyway, this was a nice looking pair of jars and uh, they ended up selling for $7,466 which is a good price. All right, Had they not been drilled, they probably would have brought twelve to $14,000. Alright, and then on to this. This was that very, very pretty pair of Famille Rose um, uh, b b heron bowls and they're not imperial they are marked in period but they're not imperial but beautiful quality decoration on them all right nice nice decoration of, of these uh, of these uh, I guess what kind of birds are these not sure some sort of uh, duck with a long beak and uh, nice gilded rim on it and uh, they brought fifty eight hundred dollars all right uh, I talked to Josh before the sale and I told him I thought these were really pretty and uh, I'm glad they did pretty well. I'm glad they went up. All right. And then on to this, he had this bladder shape. And this was an unusual vase. It was underglaze blue and underglaze red, which is a very unusual color combination. And you notice the blue looks a little bit inky on here, which often happens when they work with red on it because of the way they're fired. Uh, but the, the red uh, remained nice and strong, which is unusual. Often these copper reds, uh, when they're under the glaze during the firing, they can oxidize peculiarly and turn get greenish tones sprinkled through them. And this one, they seem to have maintained a nice deep cherry red. All right. And this also had been uh, drilled. Okay. It's an early 18th century pot. Um, Josh got into a house that had a lot of good table lamps. And uh, here's a good close-up of the foot. That's exactly what you want to see. It's sort of V-shaped. It has this little iron iron oxide line right there from when the piece was fired and the air hit it. And uh, here's a picture of the top, a little bit of fritting around the mouth, typical of these. And uh, it brought $4,935, which was a, a good price for that. But given the color combination, had it been just blue and white, it probably would have brought twenty. Four or five hundred, I suspect, maybe, maybe not even that. But you throw the iron red in it, it makes it all the difference in the world on these. It makes a big difference because they're tougher to make. And then onto this was that little um, uh, bowl that had the the, you know, the bat bat rim on it and this uh, lattice pattern with Shao characters and so forth. Here's a picture of the underside. It, is, it was a Daoguan bowl, mark and period. Not imperial, but good quality, okay? Interior, as I read, yeah, it had a little bit of wear in it. It had been used, and, as they say, well-loved. Uh, but overall, it was in nice condition, rather handsome bowl. And uh, it did fine. It brought $1,480. That was a nice piece. It was a good bowl. So overall, the, the sales last week were quite good. And coming up this week, there is also a, a bunch of a bunch more stuff um, on the newsletter. Um, we're trying to overlap it a little bit uh, to get ahead. And uh, we do the daily page, which gets updated. So you can sometimes you get a little preview of what we're going to put in here. But at any rate, um, some of these things are still up. Regrettably, the seller that had these two uh, Femi Ver uh, um, uh, vases on stands, he canceled the sale. Um, I don't know why. Either he got offered a lot of money or he didn't think he was getting enough or who knows. And I hate it when people pull stuff, so I apologize. I do avoid certain people who are known for doing that because it's a waste of everybody's time. All right, and these are things that are closing in the next few days. Um, it's this very nice pair of classic Chin Lung um, um, uh, uh, dishes. I mentioned them last week. When they first went up, they closed in a few days. Uh, this is, the central scene is sort of uh, reminiscent of the, 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 the Clinton pattern, that is, it's called in the China trade world. And uh, these are up to now, up to $304, and they, have a, uh, they close on Sunday. All right, they're pretty plates, though. And uh, then there's this, this uh, nice piece of crackleware, like a, almost like an alms bowl. Here it is. Okay, it's a late 19th century one, Schwann ware, uh, Schwann glaze. Um, there's a pit in it of some kind. And it's only up to 13 bucks. So if you like monochromes, this is going to be a good buy to take a shot at. All right, or at least leave a bid on the thing, for heaven's sakes. All right, always leave a bid. Always leave a bid. All right, and then there's this Blanc de Chine footed uh, uh, um, uh, ritual cup. 
uh, beautifully done with the vines that are going up the outside. This is Welsh Dragon, as you can see, has this up. It's a fellow over in, uh, in uh, um, the UK, and it's up to $220, and it closes on Sunday as well. And uh, then there's this pair of cloisonne boxes with uh, four-character uh, chin lung marks on the bottom. These are 19th century, but they're good quality, nice quality cloisonne. Here they are. And it has this rather unusual, um, you know, applied, uh, carved, and colored stonework on the bottom, okay? Hard stones. Um, nice looking. I like that. Nice effect. And they're up to $293. They close on Sunday. So you want to check those out if you're a cloisonne buyer. And then they have this, this Kangxi ribbed, um, very typical Kangxi ribbed Chinese Amari uh, pattern uh, teapot, uh, nice looking one. And they also did these rib pieces also in big candies. So as you see those. And uh, that's up to $155. And it closes on Saturday, it closes tomorrow. And then this jade piece, this sold um, about a month and a half ago or a month ago. and. Um, and not, unfortunately, they didn't get paid for, and the seller put him up. He's a good seller. He's down here in Massachusetts. He gets into good estates, and uh, this is Woolworth had this, and it's up to sixty-three hundred dollars. I think it brought fifteen or twenty thousand, maybe last time. Should get there again. It's a nice piece of jade. I don't know why people bid on stuff and not bother pay for it. it doesn't make any sense, unless they're trying to pre-sell it to get the money up front, and then they go, then they'll go through with it. But regardless, it's a nice piece of jade. And uh, then there's this, this uh, Perenican uh, Straits uh, hot food pot that I thought was so pretty last week. This closes uh, uh, this weekend, and uh, it's uh, doubled since last time we looked at it. It closes tomorrow, and it's up to $1,950. It looks like it's got some real interest in it. But these are fairly rare. It's, these food pots are fairly rare because they often broke. And then on to this. This is the same fellow who had the nice little jade duck and had the uh, uh, um, the Netskis all last week, all those nice little Netskis. As I mentioned last week, this guy gets good smalls, nice, small, elegant little things. He has this up. It's up to $338. It closes on Monday. I think that'll do pretty well. And uh, if you're a Chinese silver buyer, if you like Chinese silver or have thought about buying some Chinese silver, this is a dandy little reticulated bamboo and flower reticulated rim dish. Nice little dish. Here it is, okay? If you like Chinese silver, I like this. I think this is very pretty. Beautiful quality. All right, so it has it's chased and repousse, nice silver work on it. And uh, it's up to just $8. It's got five days to go, but you might want to go over and put a bid on it if you like Chinese silver. And then there's this rouleau vase uh, done in the Kangxi style, but it's not. It's a 19th century one, um, but it is an old one. It, look, it looks like it has decent age. Um, I like the, the shape of that foot, and it's nicely trimmed, neatly done, and is, appears to have good legitimate signs of age. And also the faces, the way these are done, very typical of late 19th century pieces. Um, it's nice, nice, nicely done colors and so forth. Here's the back of it, and uh, they use the same red clouds like you see on the Kang Shi examples, though it's a little bit compressed on these. But, but if you can't afford the Kang Shi one, this isn't a bad vase at all. It's a perfectly good vase. Nice looking. And I like the pine trees. All right. And this is up to just $127. And it closes um, uh, on Tuesday. He says it's 18th to 19th century. I don't agree with him. I think it's probably mid to late 19th century. But nice vase. And it's good size. 46 centimeters. Okay. So that's about uh, 12... 18 inch vase okay it's a good size nice big vase and doesn't seem to have any problems and last is this this if you like again if you like Chinese silver is this nice um, uh, deeply uh, carved uh, Chinese silver dragon handle mug tankard this is a good one he says it's not signed which I find rather surprising because most of them are nearly always signed of this quality um, and it, it may be ascribable to a particular artist if you, if you look at do some looking uh, but it's beautiful quality uh, pot. He only has one picture up, though, that I can see, which is kind of odd, okay? I mean, I'm not questioning his, his you know, the seller. It's just, you know, if you're going to sell something, to show a few angles, front, back, top, bottom. It appears to have a, a, a gilt-washed interior and all that stuff. All right, it's only up to $30. It closes on Tuesday. And uh, if you like Chinese silver or thinking of it, this is, a you know, a nice piece to start with. 
uh, good looking piece of Chinese silver. It doesn't you might want to uh, check the condition report, make sure it's not dented or damaged, but um, it looks like a good piece. Okay, and that's it for the week. I um, hope you enjoyed it. And um, we are working on the Republican period video. We got a little behind on something else that we're developing. Um, we're doing something with eBay. We'll talk about it when all the papers are signed, um, which is kind of interesting. It's, I think I think it's going to make people happy. And um, so subscribe to us here. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. And uh, come over to bitamount.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter, and you'll get the heads up and the list of things that we pick out each week uh, that would look good to us, that seem authentic and, you know, okay the way we do it. And uh, have a great weekend. And I hope you get out there this weekend and find something you love and do some shopping. But uh, be careful out there. There's a lot of copies on the market, and uh, you all know that, so it's the way it is. And um, we'll see you next week. All righty. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.